everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be talking about load balancing. So load balancing is a technique used to distribute workloads evenly across multiple computing resources such as servers, networks, or computers. This is done to ensure that all the resources are used efficiently and that no single resource is overwhelmed with the requests. By balancing the workload, load balancing helps to improve the performance, availability, reliability of a system. Here's an example. Imagine a website that receives a large number of requests from users. Without load balancing, all of these requests would be sent to a single server. This server would then have to process all the requests, which could cause it to become overloaded and slow down. This would result in poor user experience as the website would be slow and to load unresponsive. And in this diagram, you're only seeing three users. Imagine, you know, the users keep on increasing to let's say 300 and then thousands and then hundred thousands, even million. I think load balancing really helps with this and we'll see how. With load balancing, the requests are distributed across multiple servers. This means that each server only has to handle a portion of the request rather than all of them. This allows each server to work more efficiently and ensures that the workload is distributed evenly. As a result, the website will be able to handle a large number of requests without slowing down or becoming unresponsive. And I want to show you with an example within AWS and how you achieve load balancing with the EC2, which might be running your website. Also, you know, there are managed load balancers available from AWS, like application load balancers and network load balancers. Let's dive into them. So we launched my web server. We saw that it was running Apache, which is a web server service that you can install flavor of your operating system. In our case, this is Ubuntu. If I go to this address, so what I did is I changed the index.html file so I can show you SSH window here guess that you are able to let me know if it's not readable um, but if i go and do a cat on html index.html you can see i cleaned it up so we saw there was a lot of html code i just made uh, one statement saying uh, a h1 heading that this is my ec2 instance and since this is the html file that apache serves by default so slash var slash www slash html slash index if i go in here and type in the public ip of this instance Instead of seeing the Apache web page, we should be seeing this. What I want. Point being, you can have your custom website being served with Apache using EC2 instance. The thing is, if I have to send students or let's say I want to share this website with you, I'll be sending out the individual IP, right? Until and unless I have configured a domain name. And we'll learn about domain and DNS, how that works in the upcoming weeks. What if I want to do some kind of load balancing, right? We remember uh, we, we discussed a bit about load balancers and how how um, they're managed by AWS and you don't have to configure a lot, don't have to come up with the logic behind how the traffic will be handled and distributed among EC2 instances. Let's say my, my this website becomes really popular and one instance is not enough um, to you know make the website performant because I'm uh, getting a lot of views, I'm getting a lot of users that are accessing my website. So what you will see is, um, if I go down here and if I go into monitoring, you can see the CPU utilization. Right now it's less than 1%. Um, because we don't have a lot of stuff running and we don't have a lot of traffic. Let's say my website got popular and it's at 100% CPU, right? What I can do is either increase the size of this instance. I could scale out. So I could either scale up vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Remember that? Or I could scale out. Scale out means adding more instances that will be running the same website. Let's do that. So we learned about AMIs, right? They're known as Amazon machine images. So if I click on launch instance, you see how you can uh, pick Amazon Linux or Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, right? all the different flavors of operating system. Now, these are AMIs. Now, these are like default AMIs that, you know, you can pick. What you can do is also create your own. If I click here and go into instance settings, sorry, image and templates and click on create image. What this would do is because we performed three steps to get to this point is first, we created the instance with Ubuntu. Second, we installed Apache. You know, remember we did sudo apt install Apache 2. Third, we customized the default web page from the Apache page to say, this is my EC2 instance, right? So all those three steps, we would have to do it again if you don't create an AMI. So AMI takes that away. Any custom packages, any software your instances might need by default, right? So in my case, I need Apache. I need this custom web page. AMIs are a good solution. I'll call this my web server AMI. Pretty salutary. Uh, image description. This is an image of my web server running Apache. And then some stuff, other settings that you get is, so by default, it'll say, what 
whatever the size of the uh, root volume is right now since i'm using my web server and we launched launched a 8 gig uh, root volume include that but you can add new volumes here. i don't want that since i know i won't run out of storage and then tags are optional but you can add a tag saying if this is a prod website or a development environment or if this is i think tags are a good you know resource to use when you have multiple projects running in aws i'll leave that to the default and now if i go into so you're seeing there uh, we have a green um, status bar on top saying that creating ami from instance this so if i go into ami the status is pending um so we'll wait for that to change the three steps that we were able to bypass you will see we will be able to bypass using ami or custom ami is connecting to instance installing apache customizing our web page similarly if you have your websites and projects where you have reached to a certain level that maybe you install you know 10 different softwares and then you customized a lot of it there are custom settings on that web server and you want to clone that to different instances i think amis are a great option took a minute but it's available now so now if we go into instances we can start this one so that it's you know my website is running you'll see the ip would change here but now i can have another one saying my web server one because the other one is called my web server so we will name this as my web server one and now you can see instead of picking the default ami here we can choose our own this is the one we created you can look at the timestamp right so the time is in utc that's why it's 245 since we only have one um ami it picks that by default otherwise you will see like a whole menu with a drop down or you can have amis that are shared with you so in my case there's bitnami ghost that i was working with in the past bitnami is a organization that creates a lot of machine images with wordpress and mysql some of the tooling already installed so you can request those or you can um choose owned by yourself so i'll pick that uh, we'll go with t2 micro for the key pair it's reshub dash aws security group i want to allow traffic for http because you know we are running it on port 80 the volume size is fine for any of the advanced details um, it's fine um, because we only care about the actual application installed on it and the web server so we don't need um, to configure anything on the vpc level so we'll wait for my web server to come uh, online but you can see so i'll make this easier my, ignore the my web server too and you can see it's terminated the my web server is back up and running and you can see the ip has changed because earlier it was this and if i click on reload nothing should happen if i go to the new ip our website loads again now this one is up and running again oh sorry not again but is up and running now so we created my web server one with an ami um that was created out of this and if we copy this ip address what you will see is it will be running the same exact web page so these are two different instances running the same website right you see how you can achieve scaling out how you can scale your app or website now the issue is so let's say in this group when i shared the ip there were a thousand people in this group i shared two ips all thousand users decided to click on the first ip now my one ec2 instance so this one is bombarded with users so you'll see that in the monitoring where you will see uh, like cpu spikes cpu running at 100 percent i have to manually tell that hey put the first 500 users click on the first ip and then the second 500 users click on the second ip so that the load is balanced of course users won't do that right because it's tedious like how would you manage which 500 are the first 500 users it's not good user experience the point i'm trying to make is it's hard to load balance if you just have this kind of setup where you have two ips and you're managing you know the load balancing by yourself what we can do is create load balancer it's in the tab right here so if i click on load balancer you can see i already have a few for my own website and we'll go through the wizard creating a load balancer the most common one that i have used is the application load balancer and you'll see the abbreviation ALB. So ALB means application load balancer. And you can see through the diagram that it's for the internet or like HTTP and HTTPS traffic. They also have other load balancers. So the network load balancer is you can kind of see it's used for, you know, TLS offloading uh, or TCP connections. When you need ultra like high performance network and you need to manage and load balance your network after creating resources, you create a network load balancers in your VPC and it will manage how your traffic is flowing 
depending on which protocol. So the routes are defined on protocols and you can see in this diagram. Within VPC, if it's TCP traffic, it's going here, right? If it's TLS traffic, it's going to another resource. And then the gateway load balancer is usually used if you have like custom stuff or like third party stuff installed. So like firewalls, policy controls, things like that. Um, you use gateway load balancers, right? But with AWS resources, these are the two most common ones. And then for this course, we'll be using ALB. Click on create and then we do want it to be internet facing right because our web servers are public we'll go with ipv4 address vpc that i'm going to choose is the default vpc because that's where my instances are launched and then you can see it asks you for mappings for availability zones i usually pick all availability zones because you know that's the best i guess for recommended practice because then if you have instances let's say in central ca central 1d and i uncheck that and you scaled out let's say you had three instances in each availability zone the load balancer won't see it. So have that checked in. Security group will go with the default. And then for the listeners and routing, typically you will use HTTPS. But since we haven't configured SSL or SSL certificate, we'll be using port 80 here. You can see the term here called target group. So what is a target? A target group is basically a group of instances. After our ALB is created, it needs to know where I should send traffic to. In our case, it is our two instances. Create a new target. And if I click this, it should launch a visit of, you know, creating a target and I'll show you also how you can access it through the EC2 console. If you go into EC2, you know, we went through images, uh, we went through load balancers and right under load balancer, it's target groups. If you click on that, you can create a target group here and you can already see I have a few target groups that I set up. Going back to the visit for target groups, you can have different configurations. So if you're using elastic IPs, you can have uh, those IPs in here. In our case, we'll be using instances. So I'll click on instance. I'll say my web server TG means target group and this is how I name resources in AWS uh, I just use the abbreviation in the end so that I know what it is protocol as I said by um, our best practices use HTTPS but since we haven't configured SSL yet so we'll go with port 80 I will leave it to HTTP 1 protocol now you'll see health check so health check is basically so when you have a load balancer behind um, EC2 or in front of EC2 EC2 diagram so this is our load balancer and we might have multiple instances instances in zone A and availability zone B. So let's say in our example, we only have one instance in this zone and one in this. This load balancer, what it does is if this instance is running at, so let's say going back to the example of thousand people visiting my website on IP this, and then no one is visiting on this. What would happen is this instance would be running at high CPU because there's traffic. Let's say it's running at 90%, but then this one is running at 5% CPU. Once I okay, created a load balancer and start sending users to this, what I'll do is I'll see, oh, this one is at high CPU. I'll start sending users to this. I'll keep sending users to this until they both are at, let's say, 80% CPU. And then it will start doing like round robin where this is at 80% CPU. This one is at 80%. And then the next user comes in. We'll go here. Let's say it spiked the CPU by 1%. So it's at 81. And this one is at 80. So it'll send the next user to this one. And I'll keep the load balance. But what if the underlying hardware was to fail or something happened to this instance? Let's say we stopped it manually how load balancer decides that oh this instance is stopped or this instance is not healthy i will not send any traffic to this now is done by health checks so there are health checks that are done every say five minutes and if those health checks fail for any of the instances the load balancer knows then the load balancer is made aware of that oh this instance is not healthy don't send any traffic here just keep sending it here and that's how your users don't will not see a downtime that is what health check is we'll use the http protocol and we'll use the root because we are not serving you know how you have url and endpoint so let's say this was slash login but we are not serving that so we'll use the root for our health checks and then under advanced health checks you can see healthy threshold is set to five consecutive health checks so it'll check it five times and if all those five were returned as good only then it'll mark the instance healthy i'll just bring that down to two and similarly for unhealthy threshold if two consecutive health checks fail it'll mark it as unhealthy the timeout is set to five seconds among the health checks and then the interval is 30 seconds and then success code so http uh, protocol has some success codes and they usually starts with 200 uh, so it can be 200 202 2 and they go up to 299 and you might have seen you know 403 error codes with http which means unauthorized there's 503 which means server side maintenance um so 200 is for success and we'll leave it to that and that will be our target group for our instance once i click next because we chose instances as our 
configuration you'll see the list of instances here you can do is you can pick now in our case it was my web server and then my web server one so we have two if we had three we could pick three it can be as many as you want and then ports for selected instances is port 80 you can see them in pending state now because there will be two consecutive health checks that need pass if i click on create target group i'll create the target group for me and it was named my web server target group so we'll go here you can see total targets are two so while that's happening what i'll do is we can only identify these instances based on the ip right so this one is 3.96 this one is 3.99 but the web page is same what i'll do is i'll change this one to say this is my web server one i go into each you see two here go into instances connect to my instance my web server one hit the command go here do exit okay it's fine zoom in paste that command since it's using root user that's an issue we'll use ubuntu because that's the default user you click yes and then it says permanently added permission denied oh, i'm in the wrong directory cdd downloads run that command again and it worked we are in our my web server one we already have the custom web page right so uh, what I'll do is use Nano, which is a text editor. And I know that there is a Linux course for the computer system technician. So you might be familiar with the Nano command or the text editor. And this is what our web page was. So I'll say this is my EC2 instance web server. What? If I do control X, save the file, you know how to restart a service in Linux. You can do a system CDL restart and the Apache 2 is the service that we are looking for. So now if I refresh this, it should still be be this but if you go to the other server it should say my web server one so now we have got a way to identify which server we are accessing let's see if we can pull this target group here so you can see we got our target group i am back in the application load balancer wizard where we pick the availability zones so the security group and then we were at the target group section where we clicked on this link and it opened the target group wizard so now since we have created that we can select it everything else you can leave to default web server L so LB stands for load balancer and we'll click create load balancer and you can click on view load balancer so it's provisioning right now and we'll wait to be provisioned they have been registered as to healthy instances so if the health check fails it will register it as unhealthy and if you go to our uh, load balancer here you can see it's also active now remember this two IPs we were going to them individually you'll see the magic now so they gave us a URL and now you can access your website with this URL if I click refresh any guest is what would happen that's what would happen is will take me to the other one so you are not manually managing the traffic the load balancer is doing that for you and as many times i hit it you'll see you'll keep alternating the traffic so that the users are going to both instances equally you can try this on your own the lab today how you use load balancers and then it also fall tolerant because if i shut down any of the instance so i either uh, this one or this one you know i don't worry have i don't have to worry about my website being down because my load balancer will only access the server that's running then because of these health checks. The health check would start failing and then it'll deregister it from here, which means load balancer knows where to send the traffic now, uh, which is to only healthy instances.